Okay, you a brother from Georgia. Uh, okay, sure. HBCU grad. HBCU all day. You the bros on Make Us Five Thirty Incorporated. Bro, uh, yeah. That's right, Ru. Um, you're a veterinarian. You uh, did your thing. Invested. You know, correct. you got to a point in which you thought that you were kind of going to back out of yes. the business and pretty much go and kind of live your life, living your best life. Well, you know? That's it. Yeah, My yeah, end you, game. you thought you were going to do that. It was your end game until right. you got a call from someone that said, "Hey." I want you to be on TV. They could, they had a conversation with you. Then all of a sudden they're like, Hey, you better get an agent because you're going to be on TV to right. all of a sudden we got this thing situated, not just you, but now your son is going to be on TV with you in part of this whole thing. And caveat or sidebar, you said that you never saw your father, but yet mm -hmm. now, hold on, think about this. Millions of people are about to see your son with his father. Sure. That's, that's, deep. that's amazing. Deep, yeah. deep, deep, deep. And yeah. then, so you move forward, and again. What's happening, y'all? This is Mike D with Black Fathers Now, where we're bringing the village to the brothers. Every couple of weeks, you can look forward to a quick inspirational message or a thought-provoking guest with knowledge and wisdom all geared towards helping you be the best father that you can be. We're bringing the village to you. Now it's your turn to do something with what you learn. All right, y'all. Let's go. What's going on, fellas? This is Mike D, Mr. Double Down on You with Black Fathers Now. And dig this, man. We got a conversation with a brother who's bringing a whole lot to the table. And when you talk about a story, the brother got a story. And who I have is none other than my frat brother, Dr. Bernard Hodges. This brother here, oh. he, yeah, he's a dad, he's a vet, veterinarian. He is an entrepreneur, investor, author. He's also star of this new show that you're about to see because it's about to blow up. This new show called Critter Fixers. And again, as I mentioned, he's a member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. And he's an HBCU grad. Brothers and ladies listening to, because y'all always tune in to what we got going on. Let's what's up, say give a big what's up and a hello to my man, my frat brother, Dr. Bernard Hodges. What's up, brother? What's up, everybody? Hey, I hope everybody's doing well. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mike, thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, allowing me this platform. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate to have you know some platforms, but it's always good to be with your people. And you know what I mean, you know? Yeah, it's always good when when you can talk to your people because they, you know, you basically understand my plight. So you know, I'm like you say, I'm a dad first. That's the biggest thing. So, shout out to VJ, Lil Bernard. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my whole village. Uh, Corley's, Tammy, Paul, uh, my partner Terrence, who's who you often see on Critter Fixer Country Vet, and just my whole village. You know, I, I couldn't have done this without so many people supporting. Mm, mm. And, I, and you know, that's such a such a powerful thing, man. You know, the tagline for Black Fathers Now is bringing the village to the brothers. Right. And the African yeah. proverb states it takes a village to raise a child. But all of us have a village around us because what nothing good or great was ever created on an island or in isolation. Right. Without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt man. <laughs> um, my foundation is funny you say that, but, you know, I have a foundation that I started. You know, I was helping some kids, you know, and and. The name of it is It Takes a Village. Mm. It takes a village, and I've learned that. You know, it, being in a profession where, you know, I get kids coming to me all the time saying they want to be veterinarians, but they can see they can see me. You know, a lot of people don't know it, but only about 1.7% of all working veterinarians are black. Wow. Yeah. So, wow. So, right. So I'm, I'm, I was sitting on this big, uh, on a big platform at the Television Critics Association in L.A., and, we're, and they asked me, they talked about what it meant to be a black man there and what it meant to be. And I just want to put them in their shoes. I say, I want y'all to think about it. Everybody's kid from the first kindergarten to maybe seventh or eighth grade goes, to, goes into grade school. They get to sit down. And they, that first day of school, typically you sit around and you look around the room and there are pictures of all the presidents mm. on the wall. So we always say anybody can be president. But until we saw Brock do it, mm -hmm. We never saw a black guy out there. So same thing with a veterinarian. You know, I can tell my kid, dude, you could be a pre the president. It's been done. You see it. Brock is paved the way. Same thing with me with black veterinarians. This, this hopefully gives me a platform for kids who always loved animals and always want to be around animals. They can look on TV and say, hey, it's a black guy that does this. I can do it too. 
Mm, dude, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's so powerful about what you just exemplified, and that's social proof, right? Like social right. proof. Because, I mean, because the example you gave about the president, you know, all the little kids grow up wanting to be president, and our parents pacify us, right? They would be right. like, oh, yeah, my, yeah, my baby, oh, you're going to be president. Go ahead, baby. Right. As soon as the baby leaves the room, you'd be like, that fool ain't going to be no president. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, sure. you know it, it's like you watch, like, old shows are like, uh, well, you know, back in the day, and they'll talk about, oh, what if the president was black? We make jokes about it. As right. if it ain't possible, because in our mind, in our psyche, we didn't see it was possible because we didn't have social proof, right? Until yeah, proof. 2008. And the same thing, you mentioned 1.7% of all it's, veterinarians are black. Exactly. Wow. Point, I mean, it's, it's just not minimum. And, and it's, you know, it's interesting, and this literally kind of leads into the next part of the conversation. Like, what about you? What about your backstory led to you even pursuing you know, a career in veterinary medicine. So, you know, people, and, it, it, and that's the reason I wrote that book, Bet On Yourself. People see me and see the platform now, mm -hmm. and see the platform now, and they think, okay, this guy's successful, this guy has his real estate, this guy's done all these different things, but I know what it's like to be in a trap. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be in a situation where you, you looked at your report card as I did in ninth grade and you failed. And you, you like, okay, am, am I worth it? You know, am I, am, you know, how can I be a doctor when I'm failing the grade? I can't get, get out of ninth grade. I know what it's like to see the play. I know what it's like to put money on people's books. I know what it's like to have somebody call me with a collect call from, 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 from the penitentiary and they, they're my boy. And I, you know, these are the same cats I ran. ran around with I know what that's like. So I'm able to take that 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 knowledge of looking at a whole body and a whole picture of a person. So you know for me to be that guy who made it out and kind of doing well, I'm able to reach back and say, dude, if I did it, you know. Hmm. You know my situation. You know my place. You know the grades I'm in. You know the times I've been I was suspended from school. You know the times that I was skipping school doing stuff I had no you know, I know the plight of being an African American male trying to grow up. So when I go talk to these kids, you know, I, I don't, I don't hit them with the sugar coat of this. I say, look, I wrote a book so that you can see my failures, mm. and I wrote those because, you know, it's easy to see me now. I'm successful. Everybody want to be me now. Mm -hmm. But did you want to be me 20 years ago when I was a failure, or have been failing and trying to figure it out? So my my story, my my thing now is let me help you figure it out. Mm, let me help you figure it out, man. It, you know, it's like there's a quote that I use when I do very speaking engagements. And right. one of the things that we talk about is a quote from Nelson Mandela. And the quote states that fools multiply when wise men are silent. Fools multiply when wise men are silent. But I guess we also have to go into the whole notion of what defines a wise man. Right. So we always put wise men in scenarios where you have to have accomplished all of this and all of that. Sometimes a wise man is just somebody who's been through it, who can tell sure. you a little bit about it, who can yeah. help you to, you know, it's the bridge builder. Right. <laughs> I'm building I'm building this not for myself, but for those that are coming behind me. We know a lot about the whole bridge builder thing. Right. right? For sure. I mean, we definitely do. That's real, you know, and so to your point, when I hear you talk, man, because of your experiences and because of your insight and understanding, we talk social proof, but there's another word that comes to mind when I hear you speak, and that's empathy, right? Sure. And, and it's not sympathy. See, people look for sympathy. It's empathy, meaning it's not that I feel sorry for you. It's I understand you. And by you understanding, the and you have the social proof and the experiences to be able to connect, that gives you this unique position in which you have the capacity to then go and impact on such a very deep level. That's deep, man. Yeah. Hey man, it's just it's the story of my life. Again, you know, it's, it, and again, it's crazy how how all of this came about. This platform. So when I wrote the book, the the final, and, I, and I'm and I'm jumping around. The final chapter was in game. So you know, I I I I I felt like I've done almost almost all I could do with the the, the Critter Fixer brand. I did well. I I you know, I, with my real estate alone, I could I could go to France and backpack and do whatever I wanted to do. And I could buy whatever I wanted, drive whatever car. So my thought was, okay, my kid wanted to be a veterinarian. I'll teach him. I'll, I'll keep the practice. I start hiring other veterinarians. I wrote the book, but I was like, okay, this, I am going to tell my failures, but this is going to be my kind of ease out farewell song. Like I said, the final chapter was end game. Things I plan to do, how 
I had took emergency call for every other week for 20 years. I was tired of that. You know, if I didn't see another animal, I was financially all right. So I wrote the book. I did some talking, did some speaking, did a couple of things. Then I was contacted by a group of veterinarians here because living in the rural south, people don't think about it. We don't have a lot of emergency clinics. The closest ones are probably an hour and a half in either direction. So a lot of us took calls for years. And, so and got, where, are you, where are you located now? I am located in Warner Robins, Georgia, which is about an hour and a half south of uh, of Atlanta and probably two hours north of Bad Austin. Gotcha, state gotcha. Line. Okay, gotcha. Um, so being in rural Georgia, we didn't have the emergency clinic, so we took our own call, man, which, you know, if you can imagine working a 12, 13-hour day, get in your garage, get in your garage, and then get a call and say you got to come back to work. They get tired of it. After mm-hmm. 20 years. So it was almost like the groundwork was laid. These guys kind of talked to me and said, look, we want you to be part of this emergency clinic. So a group of us got together. We built the building. We hired other doctors to take emergency. So that took a whole weight off my shoulder. So I'm thinking, okay, really? I'm really about to fade and fade like Jay. I'm fading to black. Uh-huh. So I'm like, it. okay. So I get a call. Uh, actually, a direct message via Instagram. Hey, we want you to be on TV. So, you know, I ignored it. Mm-hmm. Hey, I really want you to be on TV. Call my office. I was like, okay, sure. So we talked. We talked a little bit more. Uh, they decided and said, look, we got some money. We want to do a pilot. We come come follow you and in, in, in decide. All right, fine. I let them follow me for a week. Then they came back and said, we want to give you a show. Get your agent. We're going to pay you. We're going to do this. And and it, it hit me afterwards, and and and, and I, I didn't really think about it at the time. But I've gotten invested more in the veterinary business, meaning my time, I'm doing more, a bigger platform, I'm speaking to more kids. But God knew mm-hmm. he couldn't entice me with money. Mm-hmm. It couldn't, you know, I don't care how much money, I, I was playing in the fade, but this is something new and a bigger platform that God gave me so that I can show more kids how to do it. Even though I planned to get now this wasn't my plan. I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, you know, I'm and y'all can have this. Mm-hmm. I, I'm good. So it's amazing how sometimes things work that you don't have a clue. Because somebody told me three years ago, dude, you're gonna have a national TV show that'll be on the Disney Plus streaming channel, that'll do all this stuff, you'll be in front of millions of people. I like, yeah, right. I'm I'm out. But it's amazing how. Things happen, and I don't even take call because now we got the emergency clinic. I I have a platform now to impact kids, not only in the United States, but I think about 30 countries. So mm. we're talking about people around the world that that I'm able to impact now. That it, 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 it was not my plan. It's amazing how these <laughs> things work. It was not. This was not my plan. Man, dude, it was it was well. It was your plan. It was just not the plan that you conceived. It was not the plan. Exactly. For sure. And, but it was your plan all along. And what's interesting, you mentioned something there that we can't gloss over. You said that I was at a point in my life in which the money was not enticing, right? It was the mission. Yeah, it, was exactly. the, it was the platform. It was the mission. It was the mission For and sure. the platform. And that, that is something that was so interesting because a lot of times, we and you mentioned the title of the last chapter of your book, Endgame. So a lot yeah. of us always put the end game and we put some type of financial number around that end game. Right. And what it really sounded like for you, the end game was not about necessarily the money. It was about the impact. It was about the mission. It was about, exactly. That was the key. I wasn't, you know, I was, I was out. I mean, it was just the mission. Mm -hmm. I mean, now at this point, you know, when I wake up every day, you know, work has even become more fun because, you know, yesterday I had a kid, and his, his whole parents, I mean, the parents, I mean, we got, we're talking about a senior high school, mm-hmm. well-groomed, African-American kid, coming in, asking intellectual questions. Looked like, you know, he, he played sports, but his thing was, what school should I go to? How, how do I get this? What classes should I do? His mom was engaged. His dad was sitting there engaged. They, they were talking about vet school that we talked about, Tuskegee, what it meant to me. It was just, just they were asking the right questions. So, you know, I mean, he, here's this whole family, family that has come to me for my expertise 
on just becoming what I am. Mm. That's amazing. Dude, and I will tell you, it's funny when you meant, when I hear you talk, um, it makes me think about, think about some of my buddies who are like, you know, professional athletes and doing different things right. now. And a guy that I actually went to school with back in the day became a professional athlete. And then after pro ball started doing some youth work and all of that. And I remember getting in the DM one time and shooting him a message. And I was just like, you know, growing up as an athlete, everybody looks at the end game as right. getting to the league, right? And this guy was a, a lottery draft pick in the NBA, all that stuff. So everybody looks at that as the end game. And everything that you do growing up is preparation for that. And yeah. with the work that he was doing after that, I asked the question, I was like, do you ever feel like the NBA was in essence preparation for what you're doing now instead of the other thing being preparation right. for the NBA? And when I hear your story, it sounds like everything that you've been doing the veterinary medicine, the right. uh, clinics, the investments, the real estate, the this, the that, the books, and all of that. These were all things that are preparation for something much bigger. For sure. I mean, it's, 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 it, for sure, man. It, it's, it's, it's definitely, I can't even think of a time in my life, you know, it's, to, it's just been more exciting, you know, to talk to my kid. You know, he and I are going to the house game tonight, and he don't have a clue, but I got a big box full of Nat Geo stuff. Luckily, mm -hmm. we're the same size. Everything they sent me, I'm giving to him tonight. Uh -huh. So he can go to school. He can rock his Nat Geo stuff. Uh -huh. And one of the things that I insisted on when I talked to him, I said, listen, you know, this is all about vet men, but my son want to be a veterinarian. And I want him to be on the show. Mm -hmm. So so he has a platform now where he, he does well. I mean, I, I've been very fortunate. All A makes all A's very good kids. So I'll get to see him on the show and he'll, you know, people will get to, to know him. Uh, you know, hopefully, I don't know, who knows, 10 years from now, he'll be able to look back as a big man and say, you know, when I was a 15 year old kid, I was on that geo and this is what I wanted to do. So it's just an exciting part of my life. Man, and I'm, what's, what's so cool about what you're doing is, you know, you're doing things and you're pouring into folks who are not directly connected to you, right? Sure. You know, as far as other kids, other yeah. scenarios, organizations. All the time. But you're also making sure to still pour into home, right? Oh, you still, pour. What? Sure. you know, but we can't gloss over that as well, because there are some that put every focus outside, but then we neglect the crib, right? Whereas, nah, that's I it. I know. And that's, and that's a good thing because right. we have to be mindful. Sometimes we have grandiose ideas that we're supposed to do this, we're supposed to do right. that. And one of the things that I find, um, I used to always read bios. Like I love to read the uh -huh. bios of people who've done this and done that. And one of the challenges I used to always find was this guy's a mover and shaker. He's a world this and world that. Everybody around the world loves him, but the family hates him. Or yeah, no their, their kids are estranged or, yeah. you know, they've been married 12 times or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And it's just like, to me, that's where that's not success to me. I don't care how many billions you got. If the crib, yeah. if you ain't got a piece of the crib and you're not taking care of that and you're not creating that legacy, you're not creating that lineage you know, I heard a speaker, it's a brother out of Africa named uh, Patrick Lumumba, and he said, true success is when my successor succeeds. No doubt about it. Yeah. No yes. doubt about it. Yeah, it's just like I mean, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, I mean, it, here's my pride and joy. Anybody that know me, know my key is my pride and joy, and I, it's just, you know, and, and another fact, you know, I've never physically seen my father. I don't know what he looked like. Mm. I've never seen him. No grudge. It's just, you know, I've never seen him. Don't know what he looked like. Wouldn't know, wouldn't, wouldn't know him if he was in his room. Wow. So, you know, I, but that's, that's life. You know, sometimes in, in the African American, we, we deal with it. Those are things we deal with and we, we overcome. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate I've overcome those. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm just excited that I'm watching this, this chapter of my son doing his thing. Mm. I mean, he's getting better and better. His thought process and the conversations when we ride. So before we actually go do it, we actually go out and do a cow. But the conversation we're able to have, it was in Colts. On our drive back, they put GoPros in the car. And the things he learned and picked up, I mean, he kind of shocked me a little bit. So, wow. so that's really, really a, a good thing. And and coming back home, and we talked we talk about the vision, coming back home is a – is a is a big thing. Um, my best friend, and I talk about him in the book, uh, and he ought not to be my best friend because we signed up in the army. 
Uh-huh. And we were going to the military together at 16. I chickened out. He ended up going. At 16? Well, well we, said, we, did the, we did the pre. The ASVAP stuff. Was, also. You do the ASVAP stuff. So we signed our junior year. Okay. And we were going. We was going to graduate. And I kind of. Time was getting that, you know, that summer we graduated. I was like, dude, I don't think I want to go. Let's get out of this. He's like, I'm going to still go. So the beauty of that is he went on to be a medic. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about a 30-year friendship. He came back and he works for me now. Wow. So that so I'm able to buy, I'm able to buy my best boy chicken, who grew up two houses down. He does some stuff in my real estate. My other guy, Mario, works, who I've known for 30 years. He works at my other veterinary clinic in Byron. You know, I, I can go on and on of all these people that I'm able to employ. You know, my best boy, who unfortunately went to the penitentiary, when he got out, I was able to help him start his lawn service. Hmm. He has a lawn service. I was able to use the strength of my name and contact to get him the contracts. Bought him a lawnmower. Now he's able to support himself. Wow. And he's he, he making good money cutting grass and cut some of my apartment bill. So he he's he's sustainable. Mm. I told him you gotta pay some of my money back for all the years <laughs> I put in the book. But but he's able to you know it, but that's the beauty of it. Like now it's funny because I'm at the I'm kind of at the top of the food chain and by that I'm saying people can come to me who need jobs or need something and I can make it happen. Even mm. if it's not with me. I've created enough goodwill with enough people to to do it. Cause you know, it, the the way stuff works, I've only been denied for a loan once. I got denied this this and, and I can't say it was really maybe I wasn't prepared, but mm-hmm. and it's public now. That's all I'll say. It was Colony Bank. It's a it's a mm-hmm. pretty big bank. It's maybe, you know, it's not a nationwide bank, but it's big here in Georgia and Alabama. So I was mm-hmm. not alone. I never was mad. I even wrote about it in a book. I mm-hmm. wrote how I, this was the place I got now. I can't say that I was mad. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying it was racial. It's mm-hmm. simply maybe I wasn't prepared, but I felt like I should have got a loan, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. M- move on. Case in point. Last year, I get a call. We want you to be on our bank board. Wow. So I'm on this bank board. I'm the only black guy. Really ain't a lot of, you know, and I, I could be bitter and I could always be bitter. I could have rolled bad stuff. But what I did was make it where you can deny me a seat at the table. Hmm. So now I got a seat at the table. So when I'm sitting in this room and, and these loans and these different things are coming about, I'm able to say, look, you know, let's look at this. Let's look at that. And I can't say I can give every black person a loan or everybody a loan who qualifies, but I could definitely give them a voice in that room. And, and, and so I have a voice. And so this was the same bank that you got it's denied. It's the exact same bank. You got denied. For, the only time you've gotten denied for a loan, you got only denied. And now you were called ago. recently, two years ago, to sit yes. on the board of the I'm bank the that board. denied okay. you a loan. The yeah. bank that denied me a loan. This is, this, is, this is probably, I don't think it maybe was 15 years ago, maybe. Wow. But. When I wrote this in the book, I wasn't on the board. And I still never trashed them. Mm-hmm. I, I missed it. And now they read it. They know. I never trashed them. Mm-hmm. I simply said, this is what happened. Maybe I was not prepared. Maybe I didn't go to the table with enough. Maybe I did. But I prepared myself so nobody else can since that time. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Let me tell you. It's another brother that I interviewed a while back. His name is Chris Cole. And uh-huh. Chris was talking, we were talking about business life. He's in the cannabis industry and real right. estate. He's in all kinds of stuff and, right. and, and crypto. And one of the things right. that he mentioned was, you know, when you're doing something, don't get offended, get feedback. Exactly. That, don't get crazy. offended, get feedback. So think about what just right. happened. So you said you could have just gotten offended and said, you know what? F y'all, forget y'all. Y'all ain't this, yeah. y'all ain't that. It's on y'all. But what yeah. you did was you flipped it and you got the feedback. And to your point, what you just said was, I will never be denied again. So that got you so tight in how you operate that they cannot deny you. They couldn't deny you to the fact that now you sit on the doggone board. I'm on the board. I'm in the room. I'm in the business meeting. So I walk in the room. Sometimes I'm humble, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm sitting next to the guy who started the bank. He's talking about his $40 million yacht. And I'm looking at him like, 
<laughs> you know? So you know, but but you know, it's 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 you know, it's like you say. I mean, like like we say, you are gonna respect my host. Like that's yes. it. That's it. You know? That's it. I, you you know, I, you might not you know, but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be professional. I'm gonna bring something to table. You are gonna respect my host. Mm. Mm. And the thing is that I'm really noticing, man, like you mentioned, kind of being at the top of the food chain. Right. You're the right one. Right. And, and what right. I say, the right one is that in the sense that, you know, one of my passions is trying to help the right people win, because for so long, sure. the wrong people have won. And when the wrong people win and when the wrong people are at the top of the food chain, they're right. kicking everybody off the mountain. Right. For sure. But right. when the right person's up there, they start thinking and start communicating like like Tupac used to. It ain't no fun right. if the homies can't have none. And, 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 no doubt. Because no I don't want to be there by myself. You, you know don't want to be here by yourself. I agree. Mm. I totally you, agree. Oh. But that, that's the thing, man. You know, I mean, you know, it is a process. You know, I'm, I, you know, that's the thing I want people to see. And that's why even when I wrote this book and I told these things, it is my failures. I had no clue I have a TV show. I had no sh- no clue I'd be even deeper in the veterinary business. I had no clue that I have this platform. I had no clue I would be on the bank board. Mm. All I know is, look, this is what happened to me. I, I'm, I, you know, I've been denied. So if you've been denied, make it where you can't get denied anymore. Mm. Make it where you can't get denied anymore. Oh, Lord. And, and so speaking of, you know, Critter Fixture, it's Critter Fixture's Country Vet. That's the... Critter Fixture Country Vet, correct. Okay, so has that, when, and th- we're launching, this will come out in March. So okay. when does the, has the first episode already been out there yet? The first, or has not, the first episode show starts in Mar- on March 7th. Okay. Um, so it'll, it'll be in a week, week and a half or so from now. Um, you know, it's funny, same thing with that. We kind of was waiting for a date, waiting for a date. Um, they initially said we want to wait until after Super Bowl. Okay. And... So, you know, it was like, was that the first week of February? So I'm thinking, okay, maybe the minute. Then they, they, say, then they gave us a date. They said, fine, we're going to give you the February 23rd. So I'm thinking, okay, which is a Sunday. I, I mean, to me, I, you know, I'm like, I agree. Mm-hmm. So they're like, which was after one of their newer shows called uh, The Zoo, like uh, about a zoo. Then we got a call about a week later, and it was like, well, we're not going to use that date. I'm thinking, like, God. They pushed it back another two weeks because they said, listen, our marketing people saw it, and they want to put you behind our number one show on Saturday night. So mm. they moved it to Saturday night. So, wow. they, moved it. so they gave me a, the, the, the number one slot after their number one show on their most viewed night. <laughs> it's like, all right. Because if you go to Nat Geo Wild or if you go to National Geographic, which is part of the the Disney Plus channel. So, mm-hmm. you know, like I say, it's about 40 million viewers there. The interesting thing is, if you go to National Geographic, there's not one black show. Wow. Not, not one black one. show on... Hold on. So, hold on. Let's, let's, let's go back to this. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Yes. So, okay. You a brother from Georgia. Uh, okay. Sure. HBCU grad. HBCU all day. You the bros on Megasai 530 Incorporated. Bro, bro. Uh, yeah. That's right, Ru. Um, You're a veterinarian. You I, did your thing, invested, you know, correct. you got to a point in which you thought that you were kind of going to back out of yes. the business and pretty much go and just kind of live your life, living your best life. Yeah, you know? that's it. Yeah, My yeah, end you, game. You thought you were going to do that. It was your end game until right. you got a call from someone that said, hey, I want you to be on TV. They, could, they had a conversation with you. Then all of a sudden they're like, hey, you better get an agent because you're going to be on TV. To right. all of a sudden, we got this thing situated, not just you, but now your son is going to be on TV with you in part of this whole thing. And caveat or sidebar, you said that you never saw your father, but yet mm-hmm. now, hold on, think about this. Millions of people are about to see your son with his father. Sure. That's, that's, deep. that's amazing. Deep, yeah. deep, deep, deep. And yeah. then, so you move forward, and again, this is not something that you orchestrated. They said, get an agent. You said, hey, I got to do this thing, but my son got to be a part of it. Then all of a sudden, now you have this huge platform, and it's not just this huge platform on the Disney Plus and Net Geo and National Geographic. It wasn't just a random day. They found the most popular show and yes. put you up against the most popular show on the most popular night for Net Geo. And caveat, my family and I watch all of them shows on Net right. Geo too, so this is going right. to be part of it. Um, right. 
They put you on the most popular show, but then when you take a behind the most popular show, then you take a deeper look at it and you're like, ain't no other black faces on this whole channel but me. But me. Look at God. Look at God. <laughs> look at God. That, look at God. Bruh. Look at God. That. Wow. Wow. This is, I, I'm going to tell you, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. And, and it's funny. You know, I always talk, I always think about connections and all, you know, we're right. connected through skinny, you know, Walter sure. Brown. Yeah, yeah. That's, no you, know, you know, I've been behind the scenes with him, help, yeah. you know, trying to keep him out of Facebook jail. And every right, time yeah, you I say so, <laughs> look, he's like, I look, guess. if it ain't Bernard Hodges or Michael Dorsey, I ain't listening to y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the, right. <laughs> so, no doubt. Yeah. So, you know, so he connected us and then I had to go a little deeper because if you take a step back, because, you know, you a U.S. bro from Fort Valley. Right. For sure. My father was the ace 1974 from the U.S. Keith oh, wow. Dorsey. Yeah. My godfather, 1975, mighty U.S. You know wow. what I'm saying? Deeper connection. Deeper and what, connection. Yeah. And what, what year did you pledge? 89. 89. 89. Yeah. 89. 89. That's what I'm saying. So you just stop and you think, man, there's all these connections and all these things line up. And sometimes these things line up not due to anything that you've done, but because there's a bigger force at work. And he got this story written. We just gotta allow the story to be told. That's that's the key. I mean, it's 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 been a it's been an amazing ride, man. You know, I mean, just just some of the things. Even this this thing is uh, offered me a chance to to see the see the world. I mean, we we were talking about doing these interviews. You know, I I hate I miss I will miss this one about maybe a month or two, but. You know, we all know Steve Harvey had his show, and he kind of mm -hmm. did his whole thing. But um, I got a text last, last week when we're going out to L.A. Monday, and um, we're going to do the Kelly Clarkson show. Oh, wow. She took over, but she took over for Steve. I wish it was Steve, but uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, But it's just interesting all these different, different things. Are three, weeks, three weeks before his untimely death, I was able to hang out and talk to Kobe. That was really a, a a a neat thing, you know. I mean, it's just so, and get his perspective now. I mean, we got all these good things about Kobe. I, I'm being honest. I, I mean, and more stories are coming out because he seemed like a decent private guy, and more of his personal interactions are coming out. But I was telling people, man, all Kobe talked about was his daughter jump shot. We talked and him coaching. Wow. That's all he wanted to talk about. I mean, he. he I mean. He had to. He was like, "Man, I got, I got to get, get to um, practice because like, she gonna give me the deal if I'm not there by seven thirty. You know how how she had these moves. You know how good it was just coaching this team. Man, eighty percent of our kids, I wanted to talk about him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to talk about his dog. Wow. That's that's. I mean, and I was telling many people, it's just a not. And, and, and I did have a perception like. This guy is the black woman. He is probably gonna be a butthole. Nicest guy ever. I mean, just, wow. just, just a super nice. So these, these are things that this platform have allowed me to meet and see people, and you know. So it's been a cool ride, mm. real cool ride. Mm, mm. And so, speaking of the cool ride and your journey, your story, and all of that you have going on, man. How has all of this come full circle to impact you and influence you as a father, specifically a black father? Definitely, definitely. You know, I mean, it allows my son to see because my son just sees me as dad. You know, he, mm -hmm. you know, he 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 sees me as dad. He sometimes, you know, people come up, he like, what you just dad? You know, mm -hmm. but it has allowed me to show him things. You know, I I will send him articles. He'll hit me back like, no way, or I send him. Pictures with all these people who are supposed to be famous, you be like, no way. Or oh, I'll be like, dude, okay, you know, I'm gonna be on this show, you'll be on this show. He's like, no way. So it definitely makes him see that the impossible is possible. Mm. So we have conversations that are just normal conversations that probably, you know, as as African Americans, we don't have. We talk about how to build wealth, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take him by and I'll own, you know, one of my apartment complexes and, and, and he's not in awe. He's like, okay. And it's wow. like, well, what about this? You know, I like, and he's like, dad, so what you think? I know you did these houses first. What you think? I said, well, son, I'm telling you, you should do single family houses and learn. I said, because it's one thing to buy 
one toilet is another thing when you buy a hundred toilets. Mm -hmm. and you have to redo it. I said, so, and that's a whole different ballgame. I said, not just fine, just the whole thought process. So he's there, he's thinking, and he'll look. I said, hey man, we'll ride by a house. I said, well, look at that. What do you what do you think? How long do you think is left on the um life expectancy of this roof? And he's seen enough roofs, he's seen enough things that he's like, okay, well maybe that we probably could get away with another five years of that. You're gonna have to immediately tear that one off. So we're having conversations that hopefully he can see and learn that the impossible can be can, can be possible. You know, you can own an apartment complex if you want. You can be on television if you want. I don't care if you you don't you don't see any other black veterans, you see me. So mm. you know you can do this. Mm. You know? So so those are the conversations that are really you know, we have the normal dad kid fun you know we love sports we you know we go out to sport events we talk um he started to talk a little bit about girls now so we talk have the girls talk mm -hmm. but it's just amazing to watch this young man become a man mm. and, and and have different facets um but what what is interesting to me is i've noticed and, and this is a good thing but i try to keep him grounded especially when it comes to hbcus especially as Part of being a black man, going to like he's been going to Duke in the summers for this Duke tip program, mm -hmm. and I just watched the interaction. The first year, maybe this is third. The first year I remember going over that, maybe it was an Indian kid, maybe it was a white kid, and all these kids are really brilliant. Right? To get in this program, you got to be in the top, I think five percent of the SAT scores in the country to get in. So, but to watch the interactions is really cool. I mean, I'm from the old South. I mean, I'm a black guy. I mean, mm -hmm. I know it's like the big peaches. I'm from, but I mean, I think from both sides because I would say maybe seventy percent of my clients are, are white. So they come in, they give me a hug, and I watch these kids, white kids, grow up too. They're definitely seeing colorless. Mm. That's one thing I have noticed. Just watching them, um, they're seeing colorless. You say they're seeing colorless. Colorless, like okay, color, gotcha. Like racial tar. Absolutely. To see that it, which is which is really neat. I know as a dad, you you know what I'm saying. I mean, I have some apprehensions. Not, I'm I'm definitely pro. Um, pro everybody get along. I definitely, have them, but it's really it's really interesting to see how they don't see color like we did, mm, or like we review. You know, it's like okay. So I, I'm actually learning through his eyes because, you know, when I saw him go and interact the first time we were at Duke, you know, I felt I was like, man. I would probably feel socially off. Mm. He didn't. Wow. So, you know what I'm saying? He did. That's deep. That's deep. He 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 saw smart kids, video games, something in common. Mm. Let's see if we can be friends. Man, check this out, dude. One of the one of the things that's so interesting about that is also it's also about what your target is, right? So a right. lot of us naturally gravitate to what's different. Whereas right. other people tend to gravitate to what is common. So to your right. point, like you mentioned, video games, sports, whatever, right. that's our common bond, you know, and we scratch away all the other definitive right. things that other people put on the surface. Whereas right. the next person looks at first, how are we different? And then I decide whether or not we can connect. They look at it from the standpoint of let's connect. Then if there are some differences, we'll figure that out later. But let's start right. with how we connect. And I don't think yeah. I was going to say, the, the powerful thing about what you're saying, too, though, is how we learn from our kids. Exactly. That is what I'm doing. I mean, that's, that's, and that's amazing, you know? Mm. I mean, I, you know, I, I mean, my, some, I mean, you know, it's just amazing to watch his interaction because, you know, initially I'm a little, like, feeling like, you know, want to protect him. But, I mean, he's teaching me that this world is, you know, just, just, just fit, get in fine. Like you say, get dude, in. Dude, think about this, bro. Like, <laughs> just the whole notion of the world that you're into now with right. television and media right. and all of that and how this is a totally different paradigm from being in, you know, middle Georgia, it doing is. your thing as an entrepreneur, businessman, veterinary right. and all of that. You're in a totally different world. It's interesting how, again, we think about this whole God, how he sets things up. Right. You're learning this interaction with different types of folks through your kid, which through is then kid. preparing you for Hollywood. It's preparing me for Hollywood. Totally, it it, def, it just it gives you the the confidence because you know I mean like I said, growing up as an African American man who who was thought of 
as never going to thrive, never mm -hmm. seen your father, failing student, hang out with the wrong crowd. You 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 kind of start to view yourself as almost not good enough, or 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 socially you you know I mean, will another somebody else accept? Mm -hmm. And so to watch this in the back of my mind, I've seen that I've I've gained this self acceptance, thank God, mm -hmm. but I'm still a little apprehensive with the kid, but he gets right into it. Wow. And you know I mean he got his now they got these chat groups is all different races, all different. It's, I mean, I, I, I learned from it. It's really cool. Really mm. cool. So, fellas, fellas, I want y'all to put a pin in that and really think about that. Even when you're sitting on top of the mountain, don't ever omit the fact that you can still learn from the kids. Yeah. Still learn from the kids. Mm. Sure. Mm. So, yeah. so, bro, like, I mean, with all that you have going on, you got the book, um, Bet on Yourself. You got the new show that starts, or just, well, when this airs, this will be after right. March the seventh. But it came right. out the first episode, March the seventh, called Critter Fixer Country Vet. Country Vets. Uh -huh. That's on Nat G. Is it gonna be on Nat Geo? It's gonna be on Nat Geo and then it's gonna move over to the Disney Plus. So okay, so so Nat Geo Wild, Nat Geo Wild, and the uh, Disney Plus. It'll be over there to be streamed. So make sure to check that out. Is there anything else that you'd like to kind of put out there for the brothers to promote? How we can support you? How we can follow you? How we can connect? Man, you got the floor, brother. Um, you can follow me on my my Instagram is Dr. Hodges underscore Critter Fixer Vet. Okay. Um, Facebook Dr. Dr. Hodges at Critter Fixer. But you know, I mean, and also, I have a website called I Am Dr. Bernard Hodges. So okay. you can follow me on those things, but above all, just know anything that seems impossible is possible. Mm. Because I can sit here and say, no way I thought all this would happen. Mm. All I know is my job, no different from any other job, I did it to the best of my ability. I did it every day. And I'm in the middle of the country. And they found me. Mm. So that tells you wherever you are, if you do what you're supposed to do and you do it well, you can be found. I'm in the middle of the country and they found me. The and they found me. What are they? What you know, they always say your gifts will make room for you, right? They will, for sure. Oh, Lord. Now, fellas and the ladies listening to, because we know y'all peek in to learn what we talk about. Um, make sure to follow Dr. Bernard Hodges. You can follow him on Instagram, Dr. Hodges underscore Critter Fixer Vet on Instagram. And I'll make sure to have all of his contact info in the show notes. You can visit him at, on his website at IamDrBernardHodges.com. And, um, and make sure to check out the show Critter Fixer Please. Country Vets on Nat Geo Wild and Disney Plus starting March the 7th, which was like a couple weeks ago because we, you know, we're airing this after right. we record it. And, uh, but make sure to follow him and make sure to let him know that you heard about him on Black Fathers Now. You probably already know about the brother, but just in case you don't already know, let him know that you heard about him and heard about his story on Black Fathers Now. But brother, man, I really want to appreciate you for taking time out of your busy schedule in your media wow. stuff and sitting on Kelly Clarkston shows and going to hey, Hollywood. It is my pleasure. That's right. My to pleasure. hang out, to hang out with the bros and hang out with Good Black out. Fathers Now. <laughs> I Good appreciate out. you, my man. And so, fellas, 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 make sure to follow Dr. Bernard Hodges on all the IG, Facebook, social media stuff. We'll have it in the show notes. Make sure to check out Critter Fixer, Country Vets on Nat Geo Wild. Grab a copy of his book, Bet on Yourself. Is that available on Amazon? It is available on Amazon. And, and, the, and the thing is, you will get a lot out of the book. I mean, everybody, I mean, people ask me, you know, a, a lot about the, the real estate, about a lot about investing. I put it in there in layman's terms. I mean, it is even being taught in the local school system. The superintendent came, and so the we is being taught in the schools here. That's mm. how that's how much you can learn. Oh, wow. Wow. So, fellas, make sure you grab a copy of Bet on Yourself by Dr. Bernard Hodges. Again, follow this brother, support this brother. Let's make, you know, they said that he was up against or right behind the number one show on Nat Geo Wild. Let's make sure that we all tune in so that Critter Fixers Country Vets becomes the number one show on Nat Geo go. Wild. Let's make that thing happen. And uh, so, fellas, we appreciate you all. And as always, make sure to follow Black Fathers Now on IG, Facebook, uh, make sure to share this episode out, share this episode out, share this episode out, share with your friends. Let any brother, the goal is we want every brother in America to have heard about Black Fathers Now. So I need your help for that. Make sure to share this. 
Um, as always, make sure to subscribe, leave ratings, leave comments, and um, literally go to blackfathersnow.com, grab some apparel, grab a book of mine as well. And until next time, fellas, y'all be blessed, well, and wise. And I'll holler at you. Peace. Yo, fellas, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And always, always, always visit blackfathersnow.com as well as follow Black Fathers Now on virtually every social media platform you can think of. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Just follow us and uh, and engage with us, man. Look forward to hearing from you. And uh, I guess until next time, I'll holler at you. Peace.